In today's video, we are going to talk about how to buy a fixer upper, how to structure the loan so you can still afford the renovations, and how people are financing the addition of rental units on their property. So our interview is with our favorite mortgage officer, Fred Witt with Movement Mortgage. He's gonna give us a clear idea of how to buy and afford a fixer upper. Let's get right to it. Fred, it is great to be back with you here on the No More Rent TV channel. Welcome, welcome. As you know, savvy home buyers are asking a lot of questions about how to finance fixer upper houses, things that need to be renovated, and especially the types of properties where you can add rental units. That is really in right now. So it's great to have you here. Let's talk a little bit about how people do that. Is there such a thing as a renovation loan? What is that? Hey, good to see you again, Caitlin. Um, the renovation loans are, yes, there are renovation loans and they um, are a way that you can either renovate the house or you can add on uh, what we call a, an ADU or accessory dwelling unit. And they allow for e either way you can do that. I want to ask you, I just need to look at my notes for a quick second. So people are buying fixer uppers they're doing a renovation they're adding rental units what are the rules for how the money can be spent are there specific things that have to be renovated in order to count and how do we find up-to-date guidelines you know with real estate things could be changing by the time i edit this video so how can people find the up-to-date rules on what can be renovated and what's allowed okay well renovation loans there are a lot of moving parts they're not really any harder to qualify for than a regular loan. It's just there's a lot of rules and stipulations and we, we have to stay within those guidelines. Because we can do a renovation loan, uh, Movement actually offers them on FHA, VA, and conventional. And each one of those three have different guidelines, requirements, and rules. So I, I can't, in a short uh, video here go into all, all the guidelines you're really better off reaching out to me and it really depends on what type of renovation loan we're, we're doing at that time now i know that it depends of course but are we talking about like is there a dollar cap you can only spend thirty five thousand. you can spend unlimited and then does it like you can add one adu you can add two adus like how does it kind of structure what you okay. can borrow um Okay, as far as the dollar cap question, uh, again, different programs, but if you're going FHA, if you keep it at $35,000 or less, it's basically a very easy process. If you go above 35,000, uh, there's just more paperwork, a little bit high, higher costs, but you can go up to the FHA maximum loan amount in that county, which uh, is around 700,000 in San Diego County. VA has a cap of 50,000 maximum renovation. And then conventional loan, if you're getting a conventional loan, the, again, you can go up to the maximum loan amount of about 700,000 in San Diego and no more than 75% can be renovation. So you gotta keep, you, you can't spend more than 75% of the value of property on renovation. Those are kind of the basic guidelines for that. Okay. And it's up to the buyer then if they want to say, well, yeah, we plan to add a bedroom or we plan to flip the kitchen in one bathroom. It's, is it totally at the discretion of the buyer what it is they want to renovate? Yeah, pr pretty much it is. It has to be the, the, the basic requirements are it has to be attached to the property, to the interior of the property. Now, there are some exceptions. Appliances you can add. You can get all new appliances where they're technically not attached. Um, it, it is supposed to add value to the property, so you can't do a lot of renovation with like trim work, that type of thing. You can do a little bit, but if you want to add rooms on, tear down walls, you can get new carpeting, uh, even paint, all, all those basic types of things you can do in a renovation loan. You can't do uh, like add a pool or things outside, a barbecue, that type of thing. It's got to be affixed to the property. Okay, that definitely clears a lot of things up. And I hope I don't muddy the waters here by asking, but would it be a different loan then if like where I sell a lot of properties is the country estates. And in the country estates, you get a half an acre of land. So it's like prime if you want to build an ADU. Would a renovation loan cover that ADU or is, would you need something totally separate? 
No, absolutely. You can do a renovation loan for uh, an ADU. So you could do a combination. You could fix up the house and add an ADU on it. Um, California allows um, ADUs, uh, they're, they're legal units. Um, so it, it's perfectly fine to have that as part of your renovation program. So it sounds like it's just important that like everything's disclosed. This is how much money yeah, I want. This is what it's for. Yeah, it's a little bit more than disclosing it. You have to get a contractor bid. And one thing that you do need to know is that unless you're a contractor, you can't do the work yourself. Ah. Okay? And some of the programs require you to use an outside contractor. So even if you are a contractor, you might not be able. It depends on which renovation loan program we're working on. But you, you, you cannot just get extra money to fix things up because you're handy. Because uh, we have to have a regular contractor bid that you uh, get completed. Now, you don't have to go to different contractors. We just need them to itemize out everything that's going to be part of the renovation and the cost for that. Okay. I think we've kind of covered what you need in a house to qualify for a renovation loan. But as far as a borrower, do you have to have any sort of like higher credit limit, or not limit, but credit score or any specifics being the borrower that you need to qualify for a renovation loan? Um, yeah, in, in general, you do need to have a slightly higher score, but nothing unreasonable. Uh, right now, in, in these times, we're seeing minimum scores of 660 for renovation loans. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, it, you not, don't need to be a fancy investor if you want to buy a fixer upper. No, not at all. And one other thing that you said that I really want to draw attention to is that the type of loan that you qualify for will affect the amount and the rules of the renovation loan. Yes, that's correct. So, so, so what we would do is we would, uh, first thing I do is I have a conversation with you and we'd see, okay, what type of loan are you eligible for? I mean, you obviously would know if you're a veteran, that would be a VA renovation. And then whether you go FHA or conventional depends on down payment and uh, a lot about your, your credit score. And then from there, we can look at the guidelines for the renovation because it is all one loan. It's not a separate loan. It's not like you get a FHA loan and a renovation loan behind it. It's just they get you the extra money on top of your loan. And that keeps your payments really at a very reasonable number because it's amortized over 30 years. Yeah, that is excellent. And for instance, with the VA loan, if they can qualify for that zero down payment, right? is that true to think that they could qualify for zero down payment and get the extra money for a renovation loan? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, not all lenders do offer VA renovation. We happen to be one that does. Uh, just remember, VA does have a cap of 50000 but you can do 100% financing and get 50000 to fix up the house too, which is a great program. It's super important that you choose the right realtor when you're buying a property, but it is also super important that you have a knowledgeable loan expert to know how to structure it because that monthly payment, I mean, that is a big deal in our lives. And so knowing that your dollar is maybe building something bigger, it's a truly an investment. And that's why I love working with you, Fred, is because you know the ins and outs of how to structure the loan. And that makes me a better agent. So I appreciate your expertise. And I think, you know, truly buying a fixer upper is a huge, I mean, that could be its own channel. That could be, you know, it, and it is watch HGTV, but Thanks. this gave us at least a little taste that renovation loans exist. There are certain rules to qualify for and that before you get too into it, just call Fred because you need to know what the, what the current rules and stipulations are. So thank you for coming. And as always, for your information for first time home buyers and even our veteran home buyers, it's great for a refresh as the rules change. So thank you. And I appreciate you, Fred. And let's get you on another interview. Thank you, Caitlin. Good to see you again, too. As you can see, there are ways for first-time homebuyers to buy fixer-uppers or to buy property where they can add those rental units. Um, thank you so much to Fred for the awesome information. If you want to reach out to Fred, he has a great website. You can even click on a get pre-approved button, pre-approved button, as soon as you get to that homepage. Um, reach out to him with your questions for lending. And then, of course, I'm a resource for you as well. You can check out my website, Andrew Realty Group. Dot com. Both of us are happy to serve you. One more ask. Um, if you have just one millisecond left, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Fred and I are producing all sorts of content to go over all of your loan needs. So thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.